Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and I'm back at Bricks Cascade 2023 in Portland, Oregon, and we are about to tour the whole great ball contraption layout here at Bricks Cascade. So I've got one of the hardworking builders with me if you want to introduce yourself, and then we'll head down the line here. Hey Josh, Neil Snowball out of Vancouver, Canada. Come down uh, for another weekend here at Bricks Cascade with the Pacific Northwest GBC crew. Our first set of modules, we've got uh, John Sherman out of Washington State. So he's got a whole bunch of, uh, as ever, really brightly pretty colored modules with uh, various different mechanisms going on. John, as, uh, as you can tell, has a very particular style. Everything looks beautiful, very mechanical. He's, uh, he's definitely our... Uh, I'm a more mechanically minded uh, member of the group here. I love the giant bridge here as well. In, in this case, with the way the layout is, normally this would bridge like an actual gap, but here uh, it's just kind of purely decorative. Absolutely. We're not running a loop here this year, so we're actually running an out and back. And uh, so the, the back row is a, a mix of all sorts of different bits and pieces, like the up and overs that we would normally have on uh, a gap in the tables. We've got some bits of racer track that you're going to see repurposed from uh, the old Lego racer system. And then some of the modules that work nicely in, uh, from behind, they're on the back as well to, uh, to keep that going. So we've, uh, we've got a very tight table, but there's a lot going on. So everything you see, it's almost like we have twice as much density as normal, which is twice as many problems for the, uh, the square footage. That's why you've got this great team, but we can launch in then here if you want to start at these modules and we'll make our way down. Sure, maybe I'll get John. John, do you want to come and explain your modules? Start, start here then, yeah. Okay, so the, this first module here, actually the, the bridge is also mine. You've already talked about that. So the first one is, is the rat stamper. The mechanism was actually designed by a guy on YouTube uh, that goes by the handle GBC Rat. Right, we took his concept and, and kind of brushed it up a little bit, and, and that's his first one. And this is uh, only its second show, so it's, uh, it's hanging in there. Uh, next in line, we have uh, Armed and Dangerous. Uh, one of the most difficult modules I've, I've ever designed. In, in fact, during COVID, I was going to part it out, and I decided I'll give it one more try. Rebuilt it, and, and it's actually show-worthy now, where before it blew up in an hour, so... <laughs> It's narrowly continued to survive in the layout here. It's actually become one of my more uh, reliable modules now. So, uh, Next in line is, is what I call high stepper. And uh, it, it's basically pushing these, these kind of camming mechanisms to, its, uh, to their max. And in fact, after brick can, I, I took it apart for a good cleaning and the main drive axle was twisted about 40 degrees. So, uh, if you're not breaking something, are you really doing GBC? Uh, yeah, no, probably not. And, and, and many of my modules kind of push the envelope. Uh, we have got a jam over here. <laughs> of course, my, uh, the, the counter module there that's next in line has been, uh, it, it's very delicately balanced and uh, it's picking up friction or something and uh, we're not sure <laughs> what it's going on. Of course, it's going to jam for, the, for this but uh, it's one of the most popular for the, for the public because when they figure out it's counting, we have people who come back for the big drops. Uh, you know, when it hits 10,000, uh, four of them will, will all tip at once. So, so that's where we go with that. Uh, next in line is, is what I call Rat Stamper XL. So that one uh, uh, is basically uh, does like the Rat Stamper, only it's two at once so it can run half the speed, which is a little less stress, and you can see what's going on a little better. So, uh, following that is uh, the macaroni stair, uh, one of the modules I've had for a while. I recently got all the, the uh, lime pieces for the actual stair. It used to be uh, gray, so now it's all green, uh, which is a lot of fun. And if you look back on this module, you can see what happened. <laughs> when they start to pile up, they were bouncing off the table, but that's what the line of public is for, to grab all the extra balls. Yeah, we, we use them uh, extensively today <laughs> to chase the balls down. Um, old guys like me, you know, it's, we don't like to bend and pick them up, so that's uh, where, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we love their help, so. We were on the, the macaroni then, yeah, what's the after macaroni, that? So after that is Escapade, which is actually the oldest module I have here today. 
I built that about seven years ago. It's, a, it's always a crowd favorite and it's generally a pretty reliable module. And it has a very flexible output, which is, which is very useful uh, in, a, in a run like this. So if we have to bypass for something downstream, we can just uh, flex that uh, to a different module. So. Oh, and then, then at the back here, we, I have to give props to this. This is Bob's Buckets, named after Bob Day, one of the show organizers here at Bricks Cascade. He gave me those, uh, those Belleville buckets one year in a prize pack and, and so I told him, I'm going to build a module with it. I'll figure it out. So I brought it back, and that's why it's Bob's bucket. <laughs> Bob also ha likes to uh, make minifigures of himself, so they're, they adorn that now. There we go. Well, thanks for taking us through those modules. We'll, we'll let you get back to work on some of those and keep, keep moving our way down the line. Absolutely, Josh. So right after John, we have a, a module from Steve Putz, so long-time builder, long-time uh, robotics guy. First time GBC builder, so he's built this lovely spiral tower. And obviously, being a robotics guy, this one's running on a Mindstorms uh, brain unit rather than uh, the train controllers that the rest of us rely on. So it's nice to see a, a new member of the, the group here bringing something that's, uh, that's been running fairly nicely today. Steve's finding uh, the various different failure modes and tweaks he's having to make to, uh, to keep it going, which, as ever, is what we do time and time again is uh, find new and interesting ways for things to, uh, to fail on us. <laughs> so that spirals down into what you'll see is a version of last year's Brick Slopes convention module. I've extended the, uh, the bed on this one a little bit to give it more capacity, but it's a lovely reliable module into, uh, into the next one, which is a recolored Brick World uh, 2022 module as well. We like uh, having a whole bunch of these around they're, uh, they're super reliable little things to switch in and out as, uh, as things go along. And uh, as we move on, more of my modules, my uh, workhorse, the Rainbow Stepper, it just sits and churns out day, time after time, show after show. You can see the amount of ABS dust, especially on the green step there. Shows how much work it's really been doing. Is, uh, it's wearing itself down to super smoothness. That goes into uh, an elongated uh, brick well tipper module. So again, a lot of the modules I take that have come from the conventions, I tend to extend the bed, uh, just it gives us more capacity when things go wrong. Um, okay, moving on from that, that's going into what I call the aqua pump. So There's a little water pump themed uh, brick well ball pump. Up onto the head unit is based on Matt Norman's uh, version of the, uh, the head of the pump, and that feeds out into my newest module and the weirdest uh, parts usage here you'll find, which is uh, the spinning hockey players. This is called Slapshot, <laughs> and the black spinning parts here are from the early 2000s Lego sports line that we use for the NHL hockey. So the figures are the uh, original NHL hockey players. You can see the tile underneath from that set, and we've uh, what I've done is just uh, turn it into a way to uh, automate it and run it through and obviously being from Canada hockey is uh, is a passion of ours we uh, we like to celebrate all things Canadian so this is the Canadian ball contraption this middle piece <laughs> I love that though I mean it's such a obvious idea when you look at it it's like of course you know you have them hitting the hitting the ball there well absolutely it's a piece that when it came in the original set you had a handle on the end to turn it to make it move if, some, if you can turn something by hand, we can put a motor on it and turn it into some kind of machine. And that was the inspiration to get that, uh, that slap shot movement going. So that moves on to uh, a little bit, a longer version of Matt Norman's uh, double sweeper module. Again, these are nice, reliable modules that just keep churning through over and over again. And uh, that's just sort of regulating flow into uh, my carrot patch module. You've probably seen this one around at a few shows that I've been to. It's been uh, all over the, the Pacific West Coast shows. And it's uh, basically a conveyor module themed with uh, a rabbit attacking the carrot processing plant. Um, and it just sits out. It's, at this point, it's been through enough, uh, enough work that it's fairly reliable and just churns out, uh, churns out through that. And it's feeding into... The processing theme continues, it feeds into uh, Emmett's, Emmett's crane, 
when we get a few balls rolling into it. So this is a, a skinned version of Pinwheel Zemmet's crane, which uh, I love this one. Everybody likes this module because the kids immediately identify with Emmett. They like the uh, the moving steps and the fact we've got the, the lift piece at the end as well. Moving that into what I call the pink pusher. So this is an advanced and developed version of Kevin Mitchum's pusher module. We've uh, changed it up a little bit. The big thing being the vertical backstop. So as the, the arm falls back, it, uh, it stops it quicker, gets the cycle time going through um, a little bit uh, a little bit faster and it's been uh, nice and reliable to uh, today and this is feeding into Jeff Strong's Kraken attacking so the whole thing from the uh, the input bin and the serpentine lift to the uh, the themed fall ramp with the Kraken Jeff won uh, I think he won best GBC here last year for this not surprisingly and uh, it's back again with the, the inevitable improvement on uh, reliability that we all add to things. And then from Kraken Attacking, it's feeding into the glittering wheel. This is Alec, Alex Papil's uh, glittering wheel. It's also had a bit of a facelift since the last show. Um, it's now running completely opposite direction. Nice, uh, nice uh, shiny module. People love this one because uh, it does glitter in the lights of the, the show. And it's been... Uh, fairly reliable for us uh, this weekend so far so it's uh, just sitting there churning away and feeding into Kevin Mitchum's train GBC extravaganza there's, there's all sorts going on here Kevin do you want to give us a quick run through what you've got going on oh sure yeah we've got um, a lot of a lot of repeat stars here coming off the route from the great we all have my sidewinder which um, has been performing so well, I've got a dedicated ramp behind me. So the next time it's causing trouble, we can have a less stressful time doing it. Now we've got Push It Real Good, which is another variation on the push arm, only it's a much bigger arm, so it's much gooder. And then we have here the uh, Low and Slow, which is my experiment to try to see how low you can make a stepper go. I believe Dunes has a, a version of this where he was inspired by, and like the best GBC idea is someone took it and made it better. Uh, and then we're not going to talk about this ramp. We're going to go back to the blue baller, which we've seen a number of times, and um, that's where the, the Xamphor spheres, and this is why you shouldn't use them, because they're the wrong size, and they get jammed easily, so they circulate in here until they jam, and then you won't see them circulating. Then we're coming up into the, um, the yellow wheel, which we affectionately call Weeby Jamming, because it has a history of jamming. This used to be a train loader module, but then I changed how we're loading the trains, and um, thought it was still a good mechanism. Lifting wheels are nice and solid, except when they're not, and that's going along very nicely. Then we're ramping on into, I don't remember who's, you got. Uh, I can't remember, are these, are those, those are Steve, Steve Hewitt's. Yep, I got it. So we got uh, a set of the uh, the Lime triple axle wheels there, running as a, a set of triple lifters. So back to back, these are great, very visual modules, as you can see, they stand out from across the room, which is, uh, which is what we want in GBC. We're trying to draw even more people into uh, into what we're building. So we want the things that uh, that catch the eye, bring the folks over, and then we'll amaze them with all the other stuff we've got. <laughs> Which is why you see lots of repeat things. We've got another uh, another one of Kevin's pusher modules there, cranking away, um, which is going into a drum module. And uh, these nice simple drum modules are feeding into a whole circuit of different uh, Brickworld modules. I think this is Don Sinclair's. So he's got the tipper, the ball pump, the uh, the stepper module, and then into eventually, as it comes through, as a pusher upper module. And we've got a, a string of various similar modules from uh, from various shows and conventions in uh, in this area before we head into the uh, the return route. So we head down, and uh, we're feeding back into Kevin. This time we're talking trains. All right, yeah, this is trains. So this is trains. I think we're up to V2. Um, I've got this overhead conveyor that feeds into the train. And a couple of improvements here. If you can see the train coming around, i got more than one cargo car. So we're increasing throughput because normally the train will have to pause. But we're filling up again. So when the second cargo car comes through, we can deliver even more. So this is just a simple overhead conveyor that fills up and recirculate when the bin gets full. Then the train comes around with our attractive spacer cars to another lifting wheel here, which has the automatic flywheels here, 
And these wings are very nice because we don't want to unload the train. We can just lift that here, and that'll go around to a lifting wheel on the other side, putting all those balls downstream anyway. So yeah, the train has been working pretty solidly since it's been, the, this is like the fifth year I think you guys had it on video. But the more we do with it, the more like, oh my gosh, this could be so much better. So hopefully next year we'll have another good time with it. And then we're back to a really long ramp that goes into Neil's, what is, is that your crow or your raven, Neil? That's the blackbird. The blackbird. Well, we'll go here with Neil on that one. So yeah, a whole set of racer rambling along the back here into uh, my blackbird. It's a nice, uh, nice simple module with a, a blackbird beak and it just cranks away. We got, you'll notice we've got lots of bits of racer ramp here. There is a set of Akiyuki forks. They are not running. The heads are, uh, are loose. They've, um, they've had its day already. This is day one. We're only just past lunchtime. It's given up the ghost for this show. So eventually it'll go in the box tonight. But that's feeding into uh, what I call the Leap of Faith. So this is uh, my high dive module. So uh, I think we're at about four foot something. I haven't actually measured it. So it's a four foot something uh, vertical conveyor, not attached to anything. And uh, we have the balls leaping off the end. And it's called the Leap of Faith because I have faith they will go into the target. And as you'll notice, not everyone does. Um, Occasionally you get to one watch, watch, watch one go bouncing across will, the... They'll bounce across <laughs> the room. Some will actually bounce in and shoot through the bottom exit at like 90 miles an hour down the ramp. Uh, they go all over the place. That's what's exciting about it. And uh, it's got a whole bunch of nets in there to try and dampen the, the balls, but still they continue to, uh, to bounce all over the place. And we've, I've deliberately gone with all this vibrant yellow, and you'll notice the black light in here. I'm trying to get everything to fluoresce. Yeah. In particular for uh, the lights down session tonight that we'll be running. I'm trying to see how much stuff I can get to glow and uh, and show up that way. And then we've got another set of ramp in here just to run us behind everything into uh, John's return modules, which is his Bellevue buckets at the end there, up into his up and over ramp. Yeah. So we, we saw the buckets earlier, so I think that yeah. pretty much kind of completes the whole thing for us here. So it's a great layout. How many people were involved this uh, year? We've got nine or ten people. We've got somewhere round about 50 modules. The number obviously keeps changing, <laughs> plus or minus one or two every uh, every half an hour or so as we fix problems. But uh, the number we, we tell ourselves is 50. Hopefully we stay above that. Sometimes we're dropping below, but... Uh, 50 isn't bad because it's a one, two, three, four, five, eight foot tables out and back. That's, uh, that's not bad. It's 80 feet of uh, GBC. Yeah. And we plan to go bigger next year as well. <laughs> there you go. So for the shows you're at, where all will you be involved and in kind of taking your modules throughout the year? Um, so I've done Brick Can already this year. Now we're at Cascades. I'll be in Brick World next month. Okay. Uh, I'll have a couple of modules uh, in there. And then heading out to uh, Bricks in the Six in Toronto. And uh, it looks like they've got a little burgeoning GBC group happening there. So I'm going to bring a, a couple of modules along. Uh, Brick Slopes in particular. Uh, I'm taking on the GBC coordinator role for Brick Slopes this year. So I'm, uh, I'm pushing to get more and more uh, GBC for that show. And having a, a nice summertime big loop build. And then uh, finish off the season in Seattle at BrickCon in the the nice new venue and the new uh, the new time that uh, is kind of different for us all. So we're we're excited to see what uh, what that show brings in terms of space for a GBC. Yeah, lots more exciting GBC layouts uh, for the rest of the year. You're a very busy man, so I appreciate all the the work you put into these. Thanks so much for taking us through. Oh, we love to do it. It's we love to bring the uh, bring the public in and interact with them. I think. Uh, we, we have a return ramp you may or may not have seen kicking around, which is sort of a, a three-foot orange tube. So the balls that escape beyond the GBC loop, the kids can go and find them, grab them, and put them in so they return into the loop and uh, have a little bit extra interactivity. I love it. Keep up the great work. Thank you.